I would say I was at the top of the mountain, 20,000 feet, looking down into the valley below, and everything was green and lush and beautiful. I had a successful business, successful ministry, a lovely wife, successful daughter, rich in friends, rich in faith, just had a totally blessed life. And in the space of about 22 seconds, I went down 21,000 feet to the bottom of the valley. <laughs> and I was no longer on the top of the mountain. I had a number of years as a commercial banker and then a stint as a publishing entrepreneur and I found out that I like to do two things. I like to teach and educate and I like to give business people skills that would help them to grow their companies. The CEO Institute kind of was the vehicle that I could use to kind of help educate business people on how to run their businesses better and then eventually um, how to integrate their faith with what they did at work every day. I think I had been doing it for about 12 years and wasn't totally satisfying anymore, but I didn't know what was the missing element. And I heard a speaker by the name of Buck Jacobs. Buck ran a Christian CEO group in Tampa, Florida called C12. The thesis of Buck's talk is that you could integrate your faith at work. And if you're a Christian, you have a responsibility to shine the light of God in your marketplace, in your workplace, and be transformative to the people that are around you at work. And that really, for some reason, rhymed with me. It kind of it kind of clicked in my head that uh, I've got to start doing that. I can no longer do a purely secular approach to just helping people solve business problems because I'm not giving them God's best. I went from having a job to having a calling. If you'll just allow him to use you right where he's planted you, you have an incredible opportunity to serve God at work, making that your focus, because we don't know how long, how many days we have to do that. I was probably mistakenly thinking I'm going to be here for sure until I'm 75 or 80 or 85, and now I'm confronted with my own mortality. If I had a physical exam, kind of an annual physical, and the last thing I said to my doctor is, Dr. Gist, uh, I have this pain under my rib cage and it's kind of not going away. Could you kind of figure out what that is and do I, you know, what do I got? The next day um, at 11 o'clock, my wife and I were riding in the car and we were in the parking lot of one of my customers. The phone rings, Lane is Dr. Gist. I'm sorry to tell you this, but you have a very serious disease. You have liver and pancreatic cancer and you need to go see a um, surgical oncologist ASAP. You may not have a lot longer to live. Most people with pancreatic cancer don't live for more than a year. You know, I've been in the University of Cancer for six months, and you learn your greatest lessons in life when you are in the toughest times. You know, I was too kind of focused on my stuff and watching my net worth every day in the stock market. And now I've really clearly understood what true riches is, which is our relationship with God, loving our family, loving our friends, serving other people. Don't fritter and waste your life on things that aren't really important because you'll never get that time back again. There are no do-overs. And so be purposeful, really be thinking about how am I spending my time, my talent, my resources, am I making a big difference in the world while I have breath?